Okay, well as you can see we're, um, we've got some quite snowy conditions today so um, I thought it would be a good idea just to talk you through um, how to drive in, um, in, in snow and ice. Um, the snow's been falling now for, for a few hours since about 6 o'clock this morning and um, we've got uh, quite a covering of snow uh, in these side roads. Um, I'm expecting the, um, uh, the main roads to be a little clearer um, but really what I wanted to cover today was um, how to correctly um, drive the car in, in conditions as this. You see there's lots of uh, hazards we could face along the way so I'm going to be talking those through with you uh, as we go. Um, I must uh, first of all say though before um, you start off in the morning and it's been snowing overnight um, really the, the most sensible thing to do with um, with the car is brush all the snow off um, particularly off um, the front of the car, the bonnet of the car uh, make sure all your lights at the front and at the back uh, are all uh, clean and clear uh, because you want uh, people to see you. Um, it's important that you get the snow off the bonnet of the car um, because uh, of course if you're travelling along it could quite have uh, quite a slab of snow moving up the windscreen and that could um, uh, that could uh, block your vision for at least two or three seconds before it clears so it's, uh, it's, it's quite a hazard. Of course if you're travelling fast along a dual carriageway or faster along a dual carriageway um, you're going to get snow blowing off uh, your vehicle and that could cause a, a hazard to the vehicles uh, behind. Uh, and of course taking the snow off the roof for the same reason as soon as your car starts to warm up um, as you as you pick up speed the wind will push that snow off the roof and um, and it could quite easily slam into um, any vehicle behind causing them uh, you know a brief period where their vision is impaired so um, that, that can be quite a risky thing to do so make sure it's all brushed off before you start um, and one other thing I would say is um, I would take uh, the Met Office's recommendations about driving in, in wintry conditions um, and only drive um, if it's uh, safe to do so, uh, allow plenty of time for your journey and of course if there are any Met Office warnings that, um, uh, um, uh, that you shouldn't drive then please heed those warnings and, and make other arrangements. Uh, at the end of the day it's better that we keep you safe, uh, keep unnecessary traffic off the road uh, and just uh, and change your plans. If you are finding yourself in heavy snowfall at, you know, and you've already started out and it was clear, then make sure in the winter you've, got, you've taken some quite sensible precautions about what you're carrying in the boot. So if heavy winter weather is planned and you've looked at the forecast, um, make sure at least if you have to travel that you've got uh, perhaps a hot drink in the boot, you've got a blanket, some warm clothing. Um, always carry a, a heavy overcoat. Um, and um, and if you can carry a small uh, a small shovel, you can buy these portable shovels now from most camping from most camping shops, and they're reasonably cheap. Um, it's worthwhile keeping one of those in there. Some water, and maybe uh, some cereal bars or some high energy bars, just to keep you going. Uh, if you find yourself at the side of the road waiting for assistance, and of course in, in heavy conditions when the snow falls quite heavily, uh, the the traffic. Uh, flow com stops completely and it can take some time um, you know quite an, a number of hours several hours before the emergency services can get to you um, because obviously uh, there's quite a lot of people in, in a similar condition so uh, my advice would be heed the warnings if there are any please stay off the road uh, make other arrangements um, work from home if uh, if your boss will allow that I'm sure you'll be sensible about your staying home if the conditions don't allow the drive-in um, so uh, look for alternative arrangements and, and keep um, keep a supply of things in the boot that that um, will help you out of trouble, uh, or at least keep you uh, keep you in a comfortable position waiting for those um, emergency services or the A uh, or RAC or, or, or green flag to arrive. So um, what we're going to do now then is um, I'm going to um, just uh, pull away from the side of the road and talk you through um, how I'm actually uh, driving the car and um, how the car's moving, um, what to look out for, and um, how to plan junctions, plan stopping. Uh, in order to drive safely in the snowy conditions. Okay, so I'm um, just going to start the wipers here. Um, you've got a clearer view of uh, the, the road ahead. So you can see we've got a, a, a quite a covering of snow. Uh, the first thing when you're pulling off is um, is uh, it's to uh, pull off uh, slowly. If it's icy conditions, you may want to consider pulling off in second gear. Um, pulling off in second gear, you've got um, less power going through to the wheels from the engine um, and you're able to um, move off uh, without those wheels spinning so you might want to consider that. Um, I am going to pull off in second gear and to pull off in second gear having done my checks all the way around I'm giving the, the engine a little bit more gas than I would do and just slowly um, bringing the um, bringing the biting point up 
and you can feel the engine just slowly pulling us away. Now, um, <clears throat> of course, the, um, uh, the the safe distances to be, to be travelling at um, uh, um, when you've got um, ice or snow are at least ten times uh, the normal uh, stopping distance. So you need to allow for that on your journey. Now, um, on any approach to any junction, it's the same routine that you're following about mirrors and signalling, but your approach to that junction needs to be. Um, as delicate as it needs given the conditions that you find. So there's quite a covering of snow here so my approach to this junction is very slow. Um, I'm, I've just moved it down into, into first gear as the car is now moving and having done my checks I'm making sure that I'm looking at the road ahead and I'm just pulling out very slowly. See the cyclist on the right, you see the amount of snow that's around and we're going down a little bit of a hill here towards the mini roundabout at the bottom. So um, I'm actually bringing the clutch up, I'm still in first gear, and that's having the effect of slowing the car down. So I want to keep the speed as low as I can, avoiding the brake if possible. And I'll talk a little bit more, a little bit more about that as, as we carry on. So I've done my checks left and right, I'm moving into the road. Um, you can see um, we've got uh, quite a covering of snow here and um, the wind is blowing across across the road uh, there is actually from the from the road conditions you can see there's actually um, uh, there's no clear tarmac here so my, my, my wheels are actually on the on the um, on a covering of snow so I'm now in first gear I'm just going to put it into second um, my speed here uh, notice it's right down the important th key thing is safety and uh, we've got a tricky little chicane coming up here uh, turn to the right and left uh, I'm doing no more than 10 miles an hour here. I'm keeping my speed down and my foot off the brake and I'm using the gas to control my speed around these bends. Um, the, um, uh, just going back to the use of the brake, uh, the more you can avoid the use of the brake in conditions like this, uh, the better it'll be. Uh, don't pull out in, in front of people like, uh, unfortunately, this, this car just did. Uh, she should have given way to the right there there is actually a, uh, a mini roundabout because of course if you're going to pull out on someone you're causing them to take evasive action and in snow um, a lot of people will just hit the brake and then go into a skid so um, by keeping your speed down what you're actually doing is um, you're giving yourself traction on as much traction as you can get on the road um, too much gas will cause the wheels to spin of course without traction there's no grip and with no grip there's a chance that the car um, will, will, the car will move out of control and you'll be in far less control and there's a possibility of uh, accidents. At the roundabout here I'm going to turn right. Um, on the route down to the roundabout I'm in second gear, I'm doing about 12 miles an hour. I'm coming off the gas, um, I can see there's nothing coming around from the right. I looked quite early there, early looks are important when uh, you've got conditions like this, more important than ever. Uh, the earlier you can look up the road the more you can plan for that slowing down. And, um, and the more you can plan for the slow, the earlier you're going to come off the gas, the less you're going to need the brake. Okay, so we've just moved into um, a national speed limit um, uh, road. We've got warning signs here that we've got, uh, we've got bends for a quarter of a mile. Uh, and as we're driving, I'm just uh, adjusting my speed to the grip that I've got on the road. So here you can see where the cars have been, we've got a, two brown tracks where the tyres have been. There's a little bit of tarmac. I can feel um, through the car that uh, the car's got a little bit more grip. So um, I've just increased my speed slightly to, to accommodate for the extra grip, but I'm by no means going f too fast for the grip that I've got on the road. All important here is that you maintain grip and you maintain control of the car. So um, I'm going up the road. Um, we're doing about uh, 20, 25 miles an hour. We've got some sharp bends ahead and the ideal is, you can see the traffic speed is right down. Um, so the ideal here is to keep that uh, keep that traction um, and you're going as slow as you can go for the grip that you've got on the road. Okay, so uh, looking ahead, we've got a bend to the left and you can see there's uh, slow traffic ahead. Um, and uh, of course on a, on a normal day you wouldn't expect that um, uh, on, a, on a 60 mile an hour uh, B road. Um, so with, uh, with traffic like this um, you can be, be, be prepared to be, su be surprised in weather like this. So on a road you're quite familiar with um, there could be something around the corner that you wouldn't normally expect that the weather conditions are creating. So as you can see uh, with the traffic coming towards us you may also notice that um, um, cars have got the lights on. I would recommend that um, when your visibility drops that you put your uh, 
uh, at least your side lights on and in conditions like this um, it's much safer for cars to see you so I would also put your, uh, your dipped headlights on. So my speed here up this road is uh, no more than, uh, than 20. Um, uh, the thing about driving on snow and ice is that um, the sound that the wheels make on the road is different. So when you're driving on normal tarmac on a dry road, you can actually hear the rumble of the tires on the tarmac itself. When you're driving on ice and snow, the tires go quiet. And that's because you're driving on a, a, on a layer of ice and snow that's on top of the tarmac area. So um, that's a smoother surface and you're not hearing that tire rumble. So it's one of the things you can be looking out for, listening for, when you're driving in conditions like this. It helps you, um, it helps you um, understand what's happening underneath the wheels and um, you can then f hear the grip as it starts to come back onto the roads that have been gritted. So um, I'm doing about, again, about 20 miles an hour. Got a couple of cars behind, we've got a couple of cars in front. And um, at the uh, end of the road, I'm gonna turn right. Now already, I've come off the gas. The wheels are very quiet on this road here. I've got a bit of snow underneath. I can see the, the uh, red car ahead. Um, having checked my mirrors and signal, I've come off the gas in. I've not had to use the brake because of my approach speed has been right down. Uh, I'm in second gear. I'm just gonna change it into first gear. I've avoided the brake there. Um, because I was going slow enough for that first gear to come in and only just now was, did I have to put a little tap on the brake just to um, get that uh, stop at the line um, and uh, it was a very, a very, very, very slight, uh, very slight brake there. So um, the key is to uh, avoid the braking um, but uh, wherever possible but plan for the stop and the earlier you plan for the stop the less uh, chance you're going to need the brake. So while we're waiting for this roundabout, I'm going to, I'm going to turn left. And looking round to the right, there's nothing coming from the right, so I'm gradually increasing the gas into second gear. Um, the roads here have been gritted um, earlier this morning, but there's now still a further layer of snow on there. So um, we're onto a 50 mile an hour dual carriageway. Um, I'm going to get nowhere near that speed. Um, it would be irresponsible to do that with uh, a lane almost blocked on the right and um, and uh, snow on the road like we've got. Now. So um, just look at the uh, just take the bad examples of this uh, van on the right hand side um, and the car passing me now. Um, they're passing me on a lane that's got a snow covering. Um, they're travelling too fast for the conditions, and um, I'm pleased they pulled back over and slowed down because there's there's no real need really to uh, to overtake in conditions like this. Um, it's uh, it's a hazardous thing to do and a bit of an irresponsible thing to do when you've got a layer of snow like that. So uh, we're approaching the roundabout. Um, I'm slowing down into second gear again. I'm, I'm, I'm avoid using the uh, the brake. And we're now onto um, what effectively is a 70 mile an hour road. Uh, I'm doing 30. You can see the traffic ahead is way, way slower than, than 70. In fact, it's matching my speed of about 30 miles an hour. Um, so uh, it's a good idea to keep, remember, that, that distance right back from the vehicles in front. Um, I wouldn't be doing what this car is doing on the right-hand side of me now. He's into a lane with a more of a heavy covering of snow, a bit irresponsible. Um, his wheels are slipping. You can tell by the, the spray that it's being kicked up. Um, and uh, he's not really uh, benefiting from anything because we've got a, a sensible gap ahead. So we're at 30. Um, the traffic on this road is travelling uh, no faster than that and it's quite sensible to do that. Uh, I'm going to come off here at this exit. And um, already um, I've started to come off the gas. We've got a sharp bend here. So I'm going to avoid the use of the, the brake here. I'm going to change into second gear and slowly bring the clutch up. So I'm using the engine, uh, uh, and feathering the clutch and using the engine to slow the car down. At no time there did it use the brake. Um, and then we're into uh, into this side road and we're on to, uh, uh, again, uh, a quite a major covering of snow on the road. So I'm doing about 15 miles an hour, taking it easy, taking it steady. Thank <laughs> you. 
Uh, and all the way uh, here, we're, we're, we're listening to uh, for those uh, sounds of the tyres on the road. Um, I can hear a little bit of a rumble. We can see that there is uh, an area where um, the, 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 the tyre marks uh, the, the tyre marks are, and that's probably where, obviously where the um, um, where the traffic has uh, gone along the road. Uh, it's best to stay within those areas because that's an area of less covering of snow and ice. So and there's going to be more grip. So if you, you can see now if you moved out to um, an area where there, are, there is more snow, let's say if you were turning right here, you would be traveling over, your left wheel would be traveling over that center part where there's more snow. So there's more chance of you losing grip and slipping out. So it's even more important to keep that speed right now. So I'm doing about um, about 18 miles an hour. Um, the cars around are doing about the same. It's quite sensible. And, and looking right up that road again, I'm planning for an early stop if I need to. At the end of this road, I'm going to turn left. So I can see the T-junction. I've already come off the gas. Uh, I'm in second gear only here. Um, I'm signaling left and I'm going to go around to the left. Now, um, there's a giveaway sign here and there's traffic on the road, so I'm going to slow the car right down already before I get to the junction. I've uh, changed the gear down and just slowly bring the clutch up to slow the car down into first gear. Looking right in ahead as we go. So I, we can go. Uh, now, I, um, I moved out of that junction at no more than two, three, four miles an hour. Um, and I made sure I allowed plenty of time and space um, for me to be able to do that. So once again, it's all gone quiet on the road with the um, with the tyres on the tarmac. So I'm just going to take it easy here. We're doing about uh, again about 18, 20 miles an hour. If you find yourself in this situation, it's um, it's always best not to be pressured by um, some of the uh, drivers behind. Um, if you find uh, only be travelling at a speed you deem to be safe, and you've got grip on the road, then um, uh, then that's fine. Uh, if there's no grip on the road, then you'll bring that speed right down.